And what we've done is we've attached the dehuller up to the bike PTO, which is the bike that we put gears and a flywheel on so it can run different bike-powered machines. And we're going to now take a closer look at the dehuller. The dehuller works by squeezing the grains uh, in between a rubber pad and a wooden or metal pad that is slightly abrasive. And what that does is it imparts some shear to the outside of the grain and, and rolls the grain between the two surfaces, just like you could roll it between the surfaces of your palms. And that spinning flicks the seed right out of the hull and separates them. And then they can be further cleaned up back in the winnower or fanning mill um, so that you end up with just the seeds and no hulls. One option for making this mill is obviously to just buy a regular flour mill and modify it so that in, in addition to grinding flour, it can dehull grain. Another option is just building a mill from scratch. And I have here a mill that I built that is um, incredibly easy and quick to make. It works very well. It's probably better adapted um, for bike power than the typical entry-level flour mills that are sold, like the small C.S. Bell hand-cranked mill, which is too tall and narrow and uh, has only one bearing in an awkward place for bike power. Um, and so this mill, as you can see, it has two sealed ball bearings. They're cartridge bearings off a go-kart, um, so they're very, they're very inexpensive sealed bearings. And the two bearings are separated by a wide distance so they can account for the torque imparted by the bicycle drive and their uh, under low speed high torque use. Other than that, it's a very kind of standard mill design and shape. So as you can see, there's a plastic cowling, just prevents the seed from getting thrown everywhere. There is a yoke here that supports the end of the shaft. And uh, normally a ball bearing rides against the yoke. In this case, I've just rounded the adjuster thread, um, which adjusts the pressure on the plate. The piece of all thread is rounded at the end and makes contact, presses on the end of the shaft. And then the um, other nut that's on there just locks it in place. And then there's a little hole for a drop of olive oil every now and then keep it lubricated. When I set this up to dehull, I tune it a little open. Go ahead and start pedaling, Josephine. You can pedal kind of slow. And then I bring it down a little bit. Okay, that's probably good. And then I check that we're getting the throughput and the dehulling that we want, about 95 to 98%. And then I take what fell down and reprocess it. And that's the setting for the rest of the run. On the other end of the shaft here, we have a cotterless crank arm and spider and sprockets uh, taken off of a discarded bicycle. I cut the crank arm part off and just used the sprockets. And I uh, drilled holes and tapped them. And then I also installed some steel helicoils uh, because the steel threads can take a lot more use than aluminum threads. And I also bored out the inside of the crank arm. Remember that a regular bike crank spindle has a half inch square hole. And this uses a three quarter shaft. So I just bored out the aluminum to a three quarter round hole. Very easy to do and uh, it keeps the hole centered. The shaft comes out. And we dumped a little bit of einkorn out there. But so this is the runner plate and auger. As you can see, this is a three-quarter shaft, and we have a 0.76 ID piece of tubing that has a bent um, coil of keystock wrapped around it, and that makes the auger. So when the thing turns, it augers the grain into the two plates. And you might say, why not glue the rubber directly to the runner plate, the steel plate? But actually, it's better to um, use the wood because then we can switch plates. And the idea of this mill is that you can switch from a dehulling operation to a flour grinding. Right now for the dehulling operation, the stator pad is just a piece of plywood with some grooves cut in it. 
I call them flumes because they're basically little channels that allow the seeds to work their way out between the discs. So this particular stator pad that we were testing had, has eight flumes and has some sandpaper glued around the outside to test whether or not a little bit of abrasive makes the um, dehulling action work better. And indeed it does. You can either use sandpaper like we did, although you can see the sandpaper doesn't last that long, which will make it need to be replaced, or you can use uh, some other method of roughing up the wood, like very coarse sandpaper would probably make it rough enough, or uh, you could use a piece of metal that was sandblasted or um, just ground on till it was rough. You anchor the runner plate and auger to the shaft like this. And the way I did that was I bored a hole in the shaft and then I threaded this keeper pin through two nuts and uh, then welded the nuts in place. And allowing for a little bit of distortion, what that makes is a very tight um, fit for the pin um, in through those nuts in the hole. And that tight fit holds the runner plate uh, securely in position. You can always take a drill bit and chase it if you want to uh, straighten out the hole a little bit. But you actually want it to be pretty tight. I've removed the runner pad from the runner plate. Once you mount the um, runner plate on the shaft, because of inevitable distortion in the welding, the face of the plate will not be square to the shaft. And so if you look at this plate, you can see that I took it to a machinist and I asked the machinist to just face turn. I mounted the shaft in the lathe, uh, centered, drilled the other end so we could support it uh, properly, and then turned. It takes about probably 45 minutes uh, to do, so you'll be billed for an hour of shop time at the machinist night. In this case, I asked the machinist to leave a little bit of the plate with the um, mill scale finish, just for the purposes of educating you about what's happened. As you can see, the machinist faced the plate square to the shaft, and this was the lowest spot on the plate. So hold that thought for a minute. If you mount the squared shaft and the squared plate into the housing of the mill, your next problem is going to be how do you know that this plate, the, what I call the stator plate, the one that doesn't turn, how do you know that that's square to the shaft? Mm -hmm. So there's two things you could do. You could take this whole assembly and turn it on a lathe and do the exact same thing. But now that you have a square shaft and runner plate, there's a much simpler way. I've removed the stator disc for the dehuller. That gets me down to this little piece of quarter inch Luan plywood, which um, I would call a squaring gasket. And the way we made this squaring gasket was the mill was built, the runner plate was turned square, and then we installed a piece of flat three, one quarter inch Luan plywood um, on the mill face there on the stator plate. And we just uh, bolted a homemade abrasive disc to the runner plate. And this abrasive disc was glued onto a piece of flat plywood and bolted square. And then we just reassembled the whole thing and got on the bike and rode. And that's called running in. So we ran in and sanded this. And you can see we were careful to sand this until a little bit of the original plywood is still showing, just to show you that we've squared the whole thing. Now, once you square it, it's very important that you know that it's reinstalled exactly the same way each time. And so we put a little indexing mark on both the uh, stator plate and the gasket, the squaring gasket. And so that gets your mill nice and square so that when you run the mill, the gap between the runner, whether it's a burr for grinding flour or a rubber pad for making, uh, for dehulling, it, it ensures that that thing runs nice and square and that the gap stays even.
in places where distortion is a factor, like on this plate or this plate, I tried to keep the amount of welding to a minimum. The welds are barely more than tacks everywhere. And um, this piece of pipe is sized so that a very inexpensive but high quality go-kart bearing uh, presses into it. And then the other pieces of pipe are sized so that the auger works well in those sizes. And that's really all there was to it. Uh, anyone with um, sort of average fabrication skills and an angle grinder, hacksaw, uh, cheap MIG welder or flux core wire welder can make this. And it took me about, the second one I made, it took me about four hours to cut out all the parts and about four hours to assemble them. And then it was uh, 45 minutes at the machine shop getting the plate turned.